G'day mates, I'm F1 Luke Sam and we're back on the Veloce channel. As you may know, the 24 hours of Le Mans is back. Why else would you be here? Buckle up, because this bloke right here is joining the Le Mans party for the very first time this weekend. And we all remember our first, don't we? First, I think it's important to get the name out the way. Why is it called the 24 hours of Le Mans? Well, it's quite simple, really. Competition is held in Le Mans, France, and raced on Circuit de la Sarre. The race is held over 24 hours, and the winner is the team that has covered the most distance in that 24 hours, hence the name, 24 hours of Le Mans. After 24 hours, the checkered flag is dropped and the lead runner crosses the line for the final time. The remaining drivers will have the rest of that lap to make up any moves they need to make in a desperate last minute attempt to make up that extra position. Now I know what you're thinking. Luke, I drove an hour to grandma's house last month. It was awful. How do these guys drive for 24 hours straight? It sounds near on impossible and very, very dangerous. Well, that's because it is near on impossible and is very, very dangerous. Let me clarify. The 24 hours of Le Mans is an annual event. And yeah, you guessed it. The race actually lasts a whopping 24 hours. But slow down, mate. Driving non-stop for that long, like we mentioned earlier, is very, very dangerous. So don't try it at home. Each team has three drivers to take turns in what we call stints. These stints can range anywhere from 45 minutes to four hours. So during pit stops for fuel and fresh tires, the drivers inside the car unstrap themselves and scramble out. The next driver then jumps in, buckles up and off they go. Well, when the car is ready, that is. Sometimes the driver seats are even swapped to accommodate different heights. Let's just say if I was racing, I'd need a few phone books under my bum. Thank goodness I'm not. These driver swaps usually take as long as the tire changes and refueling. So as fast as the driver swaps happen in real time, they end and they go off. Now all drivers on the team's roster are required to race. There's three. They must compete for a minimum of six hours, but no longer than 14. If they're found being cheeky and breaking these rules, the stewards will penalize the team, but not every team. Back in the day in the LMGTE Pro category, they could play it a little bit sneaky. Even with three drivers on their roster, only two needed to take turns driving. How's this fair? Because they're athletes and they're literally built for endurance. By the way, when a driver swapped out, they might hit the sack in their team's cozy bed. But snoozing is optional and teams won't be penalized for not doing so. I know I probably couldn't sleep right after an adrenaline rush like I imagine they would get. All right, let's untangle this web of categories at Le Mans. It's a head scratch, so get ready and absorb it all like a sponge. First off, we've got the hypercar category. It's the cream of the crop, and it's split into two flavors. LMH, the Le Mans Hypercar, and the LMDH, the Le Mans Daytona Hybrid. And guess what? It's the LMDH's rookie season, just like yours truly. And last but not least, we've got the LMGTE AM, the Le Mans Gran Turismo Amateur Team, where the passionate amateurs make their mark. Are you still with me? The Hypercar Showdown is massive, and we'll see Clash of the Titans. Think of it like Red Bull versus Mercedes, or Ferrari versus McLaren. But in this case, it's Toyota, Porsche, Ferrari, BMW, Glickenhaus, Van Wall, Cadillac, and Peugeot, all fighting to be the best factory entry and win. Now you're probably wondering, what's the sweet reward for conquering the 24 hours of Le Mans? Is it a champagne shower and 25 points like in F1? How about some milk and 50 points in the Indy 500? Or maybe a whopping 300 points like the Bathurst 1000? In the World Endurance Championship, the winner of Le Mans takes home a cool 50 points. But that's not all. Get this, it's double the points a winner would get in a six hour race, like the six hours of Spa. Plus it's a whopping 12 points more than an eight hour race, like the eight hours of Bahrain. So the stakes are high, the glory is immense, and the rewards are well worth the endurance. They also earn some serious bragging rights. Not every driver can say they've triumphed in this prestigious race. There's no doubt we've got some big names who have tasted victory at Le Mans in the past. Drivers like Brendan Hartley, Sebastian Buemi, Kamui Kobayashi, Fernando Alonso, and even Nico Hülkenberg. But this year, brace yourselves for an epic showdown. Hartley and Buemi are teaming up once again ready to take on the formidable Kobayashi. But it doesn't quite stop there. We've got a star-studded lineup that includes triple Antonio threat of Felix da Costa, Fuoco, and Giovinazzi, as well as Paul Resta, Jean-Eric Verne, and Jack Aiken. Now the track looks like this. It's a Formula One fan's worst nightmare, but an endurance athlete's wet dream. Drivers won't only be driving until they don't have to anymore. They'll be saving fuel, tires, and dodging traffic 
all while pushing hard. In the hypercar class alone, they cover more distance in two hours than an entire F1 race, all while passing hundreds of slower cars. The lead is slippery too. At any given moment, it's a minute or two and can be snatched up in an instant. Before I go, I think it's important to quickly run through how qualifying works. In short, as we know, qualifying sets the grid. So we've got two qualifying sessions. The first one happens on Wednesday evening, where all 62 cars hit the track. The aim? Finish in the top six of your class. Almost 24 hours later on Thursday evening, it's hyperpole time. Here's the deal. Hypercars skip the line and go straight to hyperpole because they're just that quick. In contrast, pro cars fight for their spot in Hyperpole with seven entries. During Hyperpole, it's a nail-biting half an hour session. No refueling allowed, but they can choose their tires unless the rain decides it for them. Now here's the strategy. It's all about hitting the track at the perfect time, when the track's evolving and before the rain starts pouring. And hey, if a car makes it to Hyperpole but doesn't set a lap, they still get to start sixth of their class. Not too shabby, right? There is everything I learned and that you need to know heading into this weekend of 24 hours of Le Mans. For you returning fans to WEC, leave a comment telling us new fans something we should know heading into this weekend. For those tuning in for the 50th year or your first, I hope you have an amazing one. Thank you again, Veloce, for hosting me on your amazing channel. And you can find my personal social media links in the description. With all of that being said, I've been F1 Luke Sam, and you guys, as always, have been amazing. Stay safe.